No, so in, in your tenure with um, with Dark Child and, and working with them, um, you've worked with people like Tony Braxton, Whitney Houston, and yeah. all that. You know, let's talk. Let's can you take us back to he wasn't man enough. <laughs> wow, Tim, you making me feel old, oh, man. Come <laughs> on, son. It's, so, it's so crazy because I got to say this to you before we continue. Uh -huh. My mentality is this: I don't acknowledge the past records because. You know, not, I'm not saying that is right or wrong, but in this industry, mm -hmm. you have to be current in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, while we, while we music lovers can reminisce on the past, mm -hmm. you know, nobody really cares about that. So my mental, my mental capacity is I go up and I wake up every day when I go into the studio with whatever artist, mm -hmm. I attack the record and the creative process as if I, have, I haven't seen any success or I hadn't seen a number one or anything like that. Mm. So I just attack it. So a lot of times when you bring up these records, you shock me because I'm like, wow, okay. Now I got to get my mental, my mental back on that. But Tony Braxton, he was a man enough for me, was, again, one of the most funnest sessions. It's funnest a word, Kemp. Don't, nope. don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I'm going to let you, I'm just going to let you have that one. We're going to skip right over that, LaShawn. We're just going to skip right on over that. Wait, man. This is reality, reality radio. <laughs> it was the finest <laughs> sessions I've ever had. Huge shout out to Harvey Mason Jr. Um, he was uh, with us, uh, a part of the Dark Child Camp at that time. And um, Tony came in. Again, these people trusted us. You know what I mean? They trust our ability. They trust our talent. And when, when, when they came in to do these records, they was just like, you know, do what you guys do. And, you know, the rest is history. So, but he wasn't man enough for me that it came so amazingly. I was, I'm a, I'm a big, at that time, I was a big hip-hop head. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I don't want to reveal anything without getting in trouble. But if, if you listen close to the Tony Braxton, he wasn't man enough for me versus, mm -hmm. you will hear, um, I guess, sprinkles of a hip-hop record. I'll even give you the, the record. Well, I'll give you the artist. Mm -hmm. And then if the fans later on, if y'all figure out, hit Kemp up on Twitter, hit me up on Twitter. And if y'all figure it out, the inspiration for this song, I'll let you know whether you're right or wrong. But there's a Nas inspiration to the Tony Braxton Man Enough For Me melody. Mm -hmm. If anybody can figure out which Nas record the elements of the melody came from, which part of the song on any Nas record? Y'all got to figure that out. Uh -oh. I might have to give y'all a hundred dollars or something. Oh my! Right because that, 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 <laughs> that, that <laughs> throw money in there. Hold up. Hold that, up. That, 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 that is a big one. But again, it was just being fans of music. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That session was great. Tony Braxton. We could not believe that we were in the studio with Tony Braxton. We could not believe it. You know what I mean? And, you know, of, of course, being fans of the music and being fans of the crafts, you know, she's coming out fresh off with baby face and, yeah. oh, my God, people we looked up to. And then we, we went in to do the single and then let, let alone coming up with the first single. Oh, my God. It was just some of the best times of our lives.